tonight on News at 9, Qatar in crisis. Arab nation's diplomatic growth continues while Qatar calls for talks. First at 9, this is Other Verena 24-7. Also making headlines tonight, disaster relief. President directs officials to expedite reconstruction estimates. Landslide warnings. Six districts under close watch for possible landslides by the NBRO. Ravi leaves to India. Beginning first diplomatic tour as Foreign Minister Ravi Karnanayake is now in India. And in sports news today, Angelo Matthews declared fit for India match. The state of Qatar says they are stunned by the decision of their neighbours as diplomatic ties from various countries across the world fall apart for Qatar. Good evening everyone, I'm Mahesh Johnny and welcome to News at 9 here on Other Dharana 24-7. We begin tonight with the latest from Qatar. Now the country is backing plans for talks with its regional rivals as a diplomatic crisis gathers pace in the Middle East, with several Arab countries having shut down ties with Qatar, accusing it of supporting terrorism in the Gulf region. Kuwait is offering to mediate the crisis and Qatar has responded that it will be receptive to dialogue. Now here's the latest. Saudi Arabia, Egypt, the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Yemen, Libya and the Maldives severed diplomatic relations with Qatar yesterday, accusing the country of supporting terrorism and disturbing regional stability. Bahrain, Saudi Arabia and the UAE cut off all transport links to Qatar by air, land and sea and banned their citizens from travelling to Qatar, while Qatari nationals living in those countries have been given two weeks to leave. Meanwhile, the UAE and Egypt have expelled Qatari diplomats, giving them 48 hours to leave. When Adha Dharana inquired as to how the rift will affect Sri Lanka, Minister of Foreign Affairs Ravi Karuna Nayaka assured that the crisis will not have an adverse impact. I think that this is a regional problem and I don't think it will have any adverse impact at all. But I have been in touch with all the ambassadors and the foreign ministers of those relevant countries and I'm sure that there will be a quick resolution. Sri Lanka is basically just a leaf caught in a cyclone and all we can do is whether it is Qatar, whether it is Saudi Arabia, whether it is Bahrain, whether it is United Arab Emirates, we will stand with all of them together and to ensure that we reconcile any differences that exist. The Philippine government has temporarily suspended the deployment of Filipino workers to Qatar. In Sri Lanka, however, Minister of Foreign Employment Talata Atukorala assured that the Sri Lankan embassy in Qatar will assist Sri Lankan migrant workers. Sri Lankans working in Qatar can stay in touch with the embassy. There will be no issue. If an issue crops up, we will do the needful to bring them back to Sri Lanka. The Sri Lankan Airlines media unit confirmed that flights to Doha, Qatar will remain in operation as scheduled, however, adding that they will continue to monitor the situation in the Middle East. Egypt, Saudi Arabia and the UAE have closed their airspace to Qatari planes. In Saudi Arabia, transport authorities have cancelled Qatar Airways license to operate in the kingdom, shutting down the airline's offices. Meanwhile, issuing a travel alert, Qatar Airways suspended all flights to Saudi Arabia, UAE, Bahrain and Egypt until further notice. In the field of business, Qatar's stock market rebounded in early trade today after plunging yesterday, but the Qatar Rial fell against the US dollar. Oil prices also dropped today, hit by concerns that the political rift with Qatar would undermine an OPEC-led push to tighten the market. Speaking to other Dharana, Terence Purasingha, head of the Department of Political Science at the University of Sri Jayawardhanapura, said that the regional political landscape was in a grim state. Qatar must prove that they do not sponsor international terrorism. This can be regarded as a lesson and an example for countries that support terrorism and violate human rights. Meanwhile, US President Donald Trump has expressed his view on the crisis, tweeting, Quote, During my recent trip to the Middle East, I stated that there can no longer be funding of radical ideology. Leaders pointed to Qatar. Look. Unquote. Meanwhile, the Central Bank of Sri Lanka denied reports that it has informed banks not to accept Qatari rials. The Central Bank announcement followed reports that many bank outlets at the Bandaranaike International Airport in Katnaika had temporarily halted the exchange of Qatari rials for other currencies. 
The diplomatic crisis entangled Qatar threatens to disrupt everyday life and leave the oil-rich nation isolated from key allies. Let's, let us take a look at how the outlook for people of Qatar, with their country frozen out by most of its Arab neighbours. As Qatar is a peninsula, it shares its only land border with Saudi Arabia and this was shut down yesterday. Many supplies, a substantial amount of which is from Saudi Arabia, would be cut off to a country which heavily depends on imports to feed its population. People were seen flocking to supermarkets to buy and stockpile supplies, anticipating a possible food shortage and a spike in food prices. Doha, Qatar's capital, is a major hub for international flight connections. Airlines affected by airspace restrictions made by Saudi Arabia, Egypt and the UAE include Qatar Airways, Etihad Airways and Emirates. To avoid their neighbours, Qatar's planes are forced to take indirect routes, leading to longer flight times, more fuel consumption and escalating flight prices. The issue may even affect the playing field. Qatar has been named as the host for the 2022 FIFA World Cup, but the economic crisis that may result from country's isolation may lead FIFA to rethink. While FIFA has said that it is in a regular contact with the organising committee of the 2022 World Cup, it has not made a direct comment on the diplomatic row. Will the escalating tension throw this small but affluent OPEC member state into economic turmoil? The resolution of the standoff will allow the approximately 2.4 million residents of Qatar to resume their lives and work in peace. What would happen if the row worsened is anyone's guess. Let's take a look at other stories now. President Maitripala Sirisen has directed the relevant officials to immediately hand over an estimate of the expenses related to the renovation work of roads, bridges and culverts damaged in the recent disaster. The head of state made the request during a discussion held at the Hambantara District Secretariat this afternoon. A special discussion was held at the Hambantura District Secretariat this afternoon to look into the progress of reviving lives of people affected in Hambantura by the recent weather calamity. The provincial leadership should come to a unanimous decision to mount the removal of illegal constructions. This problem arises when there is political interference. If you make a united decision, you will be able to easily continue this work. Earlier in the day, during a meeting at the Presidential Secretariat focusing on waste management in Colombo and suburbs, President Sirisena directed relevant officials to implement a comprehensive program to remove flood debris and waste from areas affected. President Sirisena inquired from officials about the progress made so far in the introduction of new laws on waste management in Colombo and suburbs. He also highlighted the importance of public and private sector cooperation in addressing waste management. In the meantime, a memorandum of understanding to construct a kidney hospital in Polonarvo with Chinese donation at a cost of 12 billion rupees were also inked in the presence of President Maitripala Sirisena. Now, Prime Minister Rani Wickremesinghe emphasizes the need to adopt measures related to, a, to create a stable zone of economic progress in the region. The Premier elaborated on the subject during his address at the United Nations Ocean Conference held in New York yesterday, whilst also touching on the topic of sustainable ocean economy. The high-level United Nations Conference to support the implementation of Sustainable Development Goal 14 Conserve and Sustainably Use Ocean, Sea and Marine Resources for Sustainable Development convened at the UN headquarters in New York today, coinciding with World Oceans Day. The Ocean Conference, the first UN conference on this issue, is co-hosted by Fiji and Sweden. Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe also addressed the Ocean Conference. If we do not make more progress on the oceans, the seas and maritime resources, all our other environment efforts, will be difficult, if not impossible, to achieve. As we proceed with our deliberations, there is an area which my government believes needs more attention. This is the organization of funding sources. We need to create a sustainable ocean economy. Government financing and philanthropic support will probably be insufficient. We will have to encourage creative private-public partnerships and other means to unlock commercial capital. My government 
and I personally have urged the adoption of measures related to the freedom of navigation in the Indian Ocean. We strongly believe that such measures will help to initiate a stable zone of economic progress that can eventually embrace large ocean areas and will provide the stability that accelerates rapid development and environmental improvement. Island nations like my own are particularly vulnerable to the impact of ocean environments and climate change. For us, rise of seas, pollution of the oceans, depletion of fish, good coastal systems are the core of our existence. Here and now, the immediacies of the world largely engage the attention of the UN. Though it tries, there is understandably not much space available to focus on the future. But surely, part of our task is also to shape planet Earth so that we will leave a heritage that generations to come will welcome. With floodwaters receding in several areas across the island, area residents were seen returning to what is left of their homes in hope to rebuild their lives. Flood waters in the town of Ayagama in the Ratnapura district has now receded. <laughs> a vehicle usually parked in a garage was swept away and was found inside the owner's residence in Ayagama. Several bridges located along the Kiriala Ayagama road were destroyed by floods. <laughs> Cracks were discovered along the walls of a building at the Infant Jesus Primary School in Ratnapura in which classes for grade 2, 3, 4 and 5 were conducted with the risk of a potential building collapse. Meanwhile, a landslide warning was issued to area residents living in Kahavalakanda in the village of Koswata, situated along the Kalavana Baddevala Road. A group of officials from the National Building Research Organization arrived at the location to inspect the current situation. Kaluta district was another location which was severely affected by floods in the recent weeks. An area resident in Botal Gamo located in Bulat Singhala put together a raft to save his van from being swept away by flood waters. Speaking to other Derana, Deputy Director of the Disaster Management issued a landslide warning to several districts today. Communities who live in the upper swamp area, especially Kedol, Raptapura and Kalutara, all Kambantota and uh, Nuwaredi districts. So people need to be very vigilant that any signs of the landslide being observed, they need to move from the particular locations for the safe areas. For our relief missions are still being conducted and the Ministry of Disaster Management already more than 165 million rupees and the goods of Vata Vara, the requirements being completely done and still being conducted uh, by the all officials from the national level to the ground level. Yet another phase of the series of clinics launched by Manusad Derada to combat the health situation following floods and landslides commenced at the Koswata Shri Kirtirama Viharia in Kalavana in the Ratnapura district today. With the objective of mitigating prevailing health issues in the aftermath of the disaster, Manusad Derana implemented a special series of clinics in collaboration with the Government Medical Officers Association, Sampad Bank and LRS Lanka. Stocks of medicines that were donated to Manusad Derana were handed over to the GMOA at the Derana head office today. A group of 25 doctors conducted the health clinic at the Koswatta Sri Ketta Rama Viharaya in Kalavana. Approximately 400 people attended the clinic. On behalf of the GMOA, I appreciate the contribution of our doctors. We also appreciate Manusad Derna for their initiative. Employees of the Sampad Bank were also seen assisting the effort in various fashion. We believe that the major necessity now is to provide medical assistance to people mentally and physically affected. We are sure that Manusad Derna and Sampad Bank will be able to continue helping those affected. Meanwhile, the second phase of Manusad Derna humanitarian initiative to distribute schooling equipment among affected children will be launched on Saturday. The Derana head office at number 320 TB Jayamavata Kalambu 10 will accept schooling equipment and children's footwear on Saturday and Sunday between 8.30 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. More local stories on the other side of this break. Stay with us.
Welcome back everyone. Minister Ravi Karunanayake left for India this evening on his first overseas visit since taking over the portfolio of Minister of Foreign Affairs. He is scheduled to hold discussions with the Indian government hierarchy. I'll be meeting the Prime Minister and the Foreign Affairs Minister, Sushma Swaraj, and also discussing matters that my President and Prime Minister wanted me to communicate. And I'm sure that these are a beginning of a healthy relationship that has existed, and we want to develop it from end to step. The University Grants Commission released the minimum Z score for selection of students to course of study in state universities from each district. The detailed information of courses and selections can be accessed via the internet and SMS or by calling the UGC hotline. According to the UGC, over 160,000 students from around 260,000 who sat for the G uh, 2016 GCE A-level examination qualified admissions in the 2016-17 academic year. Meanwhile, 71,106 applied for admissions to state university courses of which 29,696 have been selected under the general intake. UGC announces that registrations to the courses will be accepted only via the online portal. In other stories, the former chief dealer of Bank of Ceylon, JKD Dharmapala, revealed today that the Bank of Ceylon had acquired a profit of 80 million rupees by representing Perpetual Treasuries Limited in central bank bond auctions. Appearing before the Commission of Inquiry investigating the controversial bond issuance, Dharmapala stated that Perpetual Treasuries was considered and treated as a good client of Bank of Ceylon. Two witnesses testified before the Presidential Commission today and line of questioning commenced with the first witness being member of Monetary Board, Manori Ramanathan. Manori Ramanathan told the Commission that former Central Bank Governor Arjuna Mahindran played a dominant role as Chairman of the Monetary Board while there were three members including him within it. She continued to explain that he relaxed his control after the remaining two members were appointed to the Monetary Board. As the second witness for the day, former chief dealer of Bank of Ceylon, J.K.D. Dharmapala, appeared before the commission. Senior State Counsel Dr. Avanti Pereira brought commission's attention to the relationship between the Bank of Ceylon and Perpetual Treasuries Limited in the secondary market before and after the controversial bond auction. Former chief dealer of BOC explained that Perpetual Treasuries was considered and treated as a good client by BOC before the bond auction of February 27, 2015. However, Bank of Ceylon had withdrawn from its dealing with Perpetual Treasuries within the week after the said bond auction. Let's move on to business news now. The special commodity levy on imported sugar has been increased by 10 rupees per, per kilogram with effect from midnight today. The Finance Ministry announced that the levy for white sugar will increase to 23 rupees from 13 rupees at present, while the levy for brown sugar will increase from 15 rupees to 25 rupees per kilogram. In international business, Sri Lanka entered into a loan agreement with India to obtain a line of credit amounting to 318 million US dollars for the development of Sri Lanka's railway sector. The funding was pledged by Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi during his first visit to Sri Lanka back in 2015. To date, India has provided over 950 million US dollars for the development of the island's railway sector through four separate exim bank loans, which were utilized to improve the southern and northern railway line. The agreement to obtain 318 million US dollars was signed at the Ministry of Finance in Colombo today by Secretary to the Ministry of Finance and Mass Media, Dr. R.H. Samarathunga, and Managing Director of the Export Import Bank of India, David Rush Kinha. Also in business news, the Colombo Stock Exchange announced the inclusion of non-voting shares listed and traded on the exchange in its index, index market capitalization calculation with effect from the 19th of this month. Accordingly, the all-share price index will include non-voting shares currently listed on the Colombo Bourse. Non-voting shares listed by countries... Uh, 
counters rather of the S&P SL20 index will be included in the index provided they meet relevant liquidity requirements. In a statement, CSC said the move complies with common international practice. At the Colombo Bourse today, the ASPI closed 6.79 index points down, while the S&P SL20 index shed 2.40 index points. Market turnover continued to be relatively low at 468 million rupees. Foreign investors were net buyers of 134 million rupees worth of shares and foreign investor activity accounted for 38% of turnover. We now have the daily market update with RM Sivanandan from the Colombo Stock Exchange. Top 5 gainers of the day were Tabrabin, Printcare, Browns Capital, Orient Finance and Expo Lanka Holdings. While the top 5 losers were Harris Chandra Mills, Paragon Ceylon, Kalamasa Systems, SMB Leasing and Colombo Trust Finance. The Sri Lankan rupee was slightly weaker today due to light imported dollar demand. Analysts said the rupee was expected to ease due to lower imports until September. Rupee forwards were active with spot next forwards trading at 152 rupees to 90 to 95 cents per dollar. Now here's a look at how the rupee traded against other currencies during the day today. Let's take you to the Parliament now. An adjourning debate was held at the Parliament today on resolutions table at the United Nations Human Rights Council in Geneva on Sri Lanka during the month of March. Many parliamentarians and ministers expressed their views regarding the matter. The countries in the UN's General Assembly who agreed to defeat terrorism showed a different behavior when it comes to Sri Lanka defeating terrorism. In addition, the resolution brought with the consent of Sri Lanka is harmful to the country's sovereignty. When we were continuously speaking about this matter, for the past two years, even the former foreign minister told that we don't understand English and that they had no desire to bring in foreign judges. Let's say, I don't understand English. But doesn't the Prime Minister of Canada understand English? The Canadian Prime Minister says Sri Lanka has given their word to bring in observers and lawyers. This is being presented as if it's new. The former government appointed Sri Lankans as well as foreign members to the commission. The commission does not have power. Besides that, what you mentioned earlier was not the members of the commission, they were advisors. Even though the foreign members were not in the commission, they were appointed as advisors. You're talking as if we have appointed foreigners to the court. You always make false claims wherever you go. The sixth clause of the resolution, which was adopted at the 34th session, clearly says that this will not be implemented. But it's no use of telling the public now since it has been confirmed at the Human Rights Council. I have not signed any agreement, but we have come to few agreements for the public. The Honourable Members of Parliament to stop lying like this. Honourable Gammampila, of course, with his tribal mentality, I don't blame if he does not understand the nuances of this resolution. One-fourth of the whole world supported our resolution. Sri Lanka has a great army. Even buffaloes may exist in the best army. So we can only keep the good name of the army by punishing the accused. Sports News is on the other side of this break. Stay with us. Welcome back everyone. On to sports, Sri Lankan skipper Angelo Matthews has been declared fit to play the team's second game of the ICC Champions Trophy on Thursday. Matthews, who missed the first game against South Africa on Saturday, will likely replace stand-in captain Upul Tharanga, who will miss two games after being receiving a ban for a slow overweight. Still in the Champions Trophy, after being on the fortune end of a washout in their first group game, Australia were denied victory against Bangladesh at the Oval last evening. We are at the Oval today at the start of the fifth Bangladesh, game. having won the toss, elected to bat and were bowled out in 44 and half overs for just 182, with Tommy Mikbal scoring 114 ball 95 to follow up his 128 from the first game. And it's taken comfortably. 
Mitchell Stark starred with the ball for Australia, picking up 4 for 29 in 8.3 overs, while leg spin Adam Zampa claiming two scalps. Australian response got to 83 for 1 in 16 overs, with David Warner and Stephen Smith remaining unbeaten on 40 and 22 respectively, before the rain's halted play just four overs short of the minimum requirement. And it's come back with a vengeance. It's as heavy as it's been. The Sri Lanka Volleyball Federation has selected an 18-member squad to compete in the 19th Asian Senior Men's Championship in Surabaya, Indonesia in July. Players from Army Sports Club, the Ceylon Electricity Board, the Sri Lanka Ports Authority, Air Force Sports Club and Navy Sports Club are all represented in the squad, which also includes 11 players from the 2016 South Asian Games silver medal winning squad. International news is coming up. Stay with us. Welcome back. An update from London. Metropolitan Police have named the three suspects in Saturday night's terror attack on London Bridge and Borough Market, in which seven people were killed and 48 were injured. All three men were shot dead by police within eight minutes, but not before they drove a van into pedestrians on London Bridge and went on a stabbing spree in and around the Borough Market. Pakistan-born Kurambat and Rashid Radwan, both from the Barking area in East London, were named last evening and the third attacker, Yusuf Zagba, a Moroccan-Italian man, was named earlier today. Twelve people were arrested in connection with the attack on Sunday but were released today without charge. However, the Metropolitan Police said a 27-year-old man was also arrested in Barking today in connection with the incident. Metropolitan Police has come under heavy criticism after it was discovered that Kuram Bhatt had in fact been investigated in 2015. The attack took place just days before the controversial snap election in the UK due to be held on Thursday. UK Prime Minister Theresa May's gamble on elections aimed at strengthening her hand in upcoming Brexit negotiations had been thrust into doubt with opinion polls showing her party's lead shortening markedly in recent weeks. Well, Katharina Chang is here with the weather. Thank you, Mahish, and welcome to the Weather Center. Now, if you look at the map, we can see low pressure areas still in form in the southwest part of the Indian Ocean, bringing strong gusts of wind of about 50 kilometers per hour, particularly over Matale and Hambant districts. Now, this could also result in light showers we experience, particularly in the western, Sabragamua, southern, central, and northwestern provinces over the next 24 hours. We can also see patches of rain clouds above Kurunagala and Kandy, as well as Ratnapura. Temperatures are to vary between 22 and 34 degrees Celsius in the next 24 hours. Now that is it from the Weather Centre, but let's now take a look at the city-by-city -city weather forecast in key cities across the island. And that is a part of your world tonight right here on Other Than a 24-7. I will return tomorrow at the same time with our news at 9. Make sure you join us then. And before we go, we'd like to take you to Taiwan, where the much-loved dragon boat race was held recently. Dragon boat racing is now a sport, but the festival has its roots in Chinese folklore and is held annually on the fifth day of the fifth month of the lunar calendar. Thank you for joining us. Good night. A day. This is Sri Lanka's premier news channel, Adhavarana 24-7.